Please welcome David LaFrance, CEO of American Waterworks Association. Welcome to Good Day AWWA. Today, my guest is Zach Harding, Olympic swimmer and spokesperson for Louisville Pure Tap brand of tap water. Zach was born in Madison, Alabama, where he became a high school state swimming champion in the 100-yard butterfly. He went on to swim collegiately for the University of Louisville, where he was both a champion and distinguished himself with all American honors. At the 2020 U.S. Olympic Swimming Trials, he won the 200 butterfly qualifying to compete in the Olympic Games in Tokyo. And in his spare time, Zach is that spokesperson for Louisville Water and their Pure Tap brand. Today, we're going to talk about swimming and water, Zach's nickname as the Swimming Batman, and what's next for Zach. Let's have some food and talk to Zach about what water means to him. Welcome, Zach. Hey, how's everybody doing? We're doing well. Thank you for being with us today. Uh, we're having uh, some breakfast and I think you're having some lunch. Yep. And I have here an omelet with some avocado, hash browns and some toast. And I understand from you, this is an Olympic swimming breakfast. Yes, yeah, so it's my go-to every just about every single day. With you gotta have so like four French toast sticks to heat up while you're making the breakfast. You know, a little appetizer. I, I forgot uh, I that, part. that part out. Uh, and what are you gonna have today? So I've got a uh, I've got some roasted chicken breast uh, from the whole chicken that we roasted last night with some mashed potatoes and broccoli with a gravy that I made from from scratch. From I forget what what type of beef it was that left some nice drippings for us so all right so shall we just dive in and have a little bit of this for breakfast and for you for lunch yeah i'm, I'm getting hungry so zach while your mouth is full you know everybody i know who's a swimmer has a memory of when they started swimming when they fell in love with swimming maybe not at the competitive level like you but maybe just for the pure joy uh, and pleasure and fun of being in the water. What's your story? Uh, I know I fell in love with the water. I was five years old. Uh, we were in Guam. My dad uh, traveled a lot for work. So we were living in Guam for, I, was, I think it was only a couple of months. But uh, I was like learning to read and learning alphabet there. And as a way to help teach me, it's like, hey, we're going to go to the loop, which is pool backwards. And I had no idea what that meant. He's like, Spell it backwards. So, like, in my head, it took me, like, five minutes to figure it out. I'm like, oh, we're going to the pool because the place we were staying at had a pool, and we'd go there just about every day. And I loved to swim under the water. I hated swimming on top. My mom tried to teach me how to swim on top of the water, but I hated it. And now I love to swim on top of the water and a little bit less under the water. Uh, now that I – that's the low oxygen environment, as I've come to call it. Uh, but, yeah, and then we, as soon as we moved back stateside, my – my mom signed me up for a local summer league and uh, been swimming ever since. Fantastic. So let's talk about swimming a little bit for you today and what, what it's all about. You know, I mentioned earlier in the introduction that we were going to talk about your nickname of the Swimming Batman. So so what is the Swimming Batman all about? So uh, I'm, I'm, I like to have fun when I swim. That's why I do it. Uh, my parents said, uh, if you're not having fun, let us know because it's just a waste of everybody's time uh, if you're not enjoying it. And so uh, 2016 trials, I'm swimming for uh, an Olympic spot against Michael Phelps and a lot of other distinguished national teamers that I think of, out of the eight swimmers in that final, six of them went on to go make the team either in that event or another event. And there's me and uh, one other guy that was in my class. So very good field that, that I was racing and biggest moment of my life. First time to be able to qualify for the Olympics has been my dream since I was seven. And I kind of used it as just a way to like overcome the fear and anxiety that came with it, looking back on it. And then I didn't have to focus about what I was doing in my race or, oh my gosh, this is the Olympic trials. I'm racing for an Olympic spot. Whoa. At like 18, 19 years old. And I could just focus on being Batman through the walkout. By the time I took off my onesie, I stepped up on the blocks. I didn't have time to worry about it. So, because the race has already started. So, it's kind of a coping so, mechanism, is I think what they call it. 
Uh, so what did other people think as you walked out that way? Did they know you were going to come out that way or? Uh, I, I had gone and asked my coach beforehand because I don't want to. I wanted to make sure it was cool with him because I knew I was swimming for the university and didn't want to make the university look bad or anything. And his words were, "If you're going to do that, then you have to deliver. You can't do that and go slow. Those you can, then you're that guy." Uh, but I, I went and went the best time and had gotten uh, gotten faster and had a good swim and ended up seventh. So, have, have so you, it was okay. Have you worn the costume since? I wore it one time in 2017, but it didn't have the same effect. Uh, I did take it to Tokyo, though. And I got a picture with it in front of the rings. Uh, so that was kind of a cool uh, full circle moment for me. Perfect. All right, so let's, uh, you brought up Tokyo. Let's ta start talking about Tokyo. Uh, so tell us about what the experience was like for you. Maybe start as you got there and talk. let's talk about your races and uh, things of that nature. Yeah, so we landed and just getting with COVID into the airport or getting through the airport took six hours from wheels down to wheels down at the hotel that we were staying at. So that was a long day or I guess night at the at the airport. And then uh, we were in a super nice hotel, super nice training facility, uh, stayed there for about a half week and then moved on to the village and check in there was super smooth. And you're just walking around and uh, we went straight to the dining hall as soon as we dropped off our bags and you look around and you have basically everyone from around the world, uh, different sports. So you have different body types. You have uh, their coaches, the trainers, the physicians, the dietitians, the assistant coaches, the warm up, the, the the players. And it was just that's the best part about the Olympics, I think, is the because everyone goes to the villa, the dining hall to eat. So when you're there, you can like you, there's so many different options of food to have, too. And so. That's a good way to make friends is you're standing in line and like you look at someone else's plate like hey where, where'd you get that no like, hey it's over there um or like hey it's over there mate and so like when i say cheers instead of goodbye or, or different things like that and so i like to pick up those those cues from other people in other countries and got to see a couple of my friends for that i only get to meet at big meets uh been friends with them for like a couple of them for six years now um and then then we go to the venue and the venue is absolutely beautiful uh, it's massive. It's kind of a shame that it had to be no no spectators. I get it, uh, but it it was it was big and and it was it was going to be nice for everybody. So what's the first thing like when you go to the venue? What's the first thing you did when you got to the pool? Well, as, for, as soon as I got in the competition pool, you dive in and you have to go feet first for safety, so you don't dive on people. So you go feet first, kind of like a reverse dive. So you go to the bottom real quick. You got to taste the water and you kind of got to swish it around in your mouth because not all pools taste the same. In now wait, do, do you do that or does everybody do that? I don't know. I would hope everyone tasted the pool because I don't know. It would throw me off in the middle of the race if I'm diving in a pool for the first time. I'm like, oh, that tastes funky. You got chlorine, salt, bromine pools or bromine pools. And um, in 2016, it tasted like you could taste the construction and the new plastic. Uh, so it's different. It's something to get used to. It's a it's a new pool. But then like exactly. you come from that, and then you can go swim. You could almost be a water chemist, I think. Yeah, I know all my chemicals for it. Uh, all right. So let's talk about the events you were in, and maybe we just fast forward up to the semifinals and and walk us through the semifinals that you were in. All right. So for for everybody in the U.S., it was at night, but for me, it was uh, ten or eleven in the morning which normally at a swimming meet, uh, especially of that caliber, the final is at night, but with TV and, and coverage and stuff is in the morning. So it's a little weird to get up and go. Uh, and that'd be, it'd be very easy to use that as an excuse. Probably that's a bigger reason why not as many world records were set compared to normal on that and COVID, I think. Um, but I'm going through the ready room. The ready room is where you go right before you walk out for the race. You gotta be there 15, 20 minutes before you swim. Uh, so that's an adjustment when you go overseas. It's very, no one was really talking. There's lots of like slapping yourself, like lots of that. Trying to drink water so you don't get caught in mouth. Very, no one's really talking. So it's not very, it's very official and formal kind of. Not every ready room is like that. The 50 free, you could be, you know, chat and have a good time and go swim. And that's just how my experience was with the, the 200 fly. Uh, and walk out and, Beginning, I'm, I'm thinking like we just need a good race. We're going to win. We can win the heat. Uh, we don't. I mean, 
My biggest thing that I think I, I messed up with was I started counting my strokes on the third 50, which is great for training, but in the middle of the race, it makes it more of a robotic swim versus a race. And so uh, ended up missing the final by 0.04. But the guy next to me, I was good friends with, and uh, we, were, we were riding the bus back from, from prelims the, the night before. And he's at, I had the schedule and I was, I was talking to him so he could figure out when he wanted to go to the pool and we we're doing that together. I'm like, hey, man, like, yeah, I got you, man. I'm your favorite American to race. And then we, we ended up getting like side by side. Uh, so he was from Hungary. Uh, but, yeah, it, it was a lot of fun to be in, in that experience. There's an Olympic semifinal. There's more pressure than, than I've experienced. But that's why that's why I race is for moments like that. Yeah, that was a really close finish in your semifinals and even – when you compare it with, with the semifinals, the next semifinals that came after you. Those right. were really, I mean, it was just touch-touch sort of thing. Yeah, point three. So most, like you could easily, it doesn't take long to do that on a watch. I'd say distance-wise, you're looking at maybe two feet, maybe. And you're talking about moving your arm that fast. Anyone can move their arm two feet that, that quickly. So, uh, yeah, splits yeah. a hundredth of a second. All right, so... You ready for some uh, rapid fire questions? Bring them on. All right. So um, do you have any rituals before you start a race? Yeah. When I step up on the blocks, I pull pull the block and then I put my foot on the block and, and, and jam that just to make sure it's not going to slide on me. Uh, seeing that happen to other people doesn't look fun. Don't want it to happen to me. Uh, did you get an Olympic ring tattoo? No, but I'm going to. Uh, I'm racing in Italy uh, about a week from today, so I couldn't fit the tattoo in my time off. But I'm gonna get it right here. Perfect. And I'm gonna fill in the. I'm gonna get it colored and fill in the red one uh, for Japan, and maybe then get you a. And have, you and I'll have matching tattoos then. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Last ra last rapid fire question. Uh, what do you say to kids who are starting and on their first swimming team? I'd say your your first goal is to have as much fun as you can. Uh, that's what sports are for. You're just going and playing around. That's So do that. The second thing would be work hard and don't focus on the results, that those will come. Listen to your coaches, have fun, work hard, and enjoy it. Perfect. I think that's those are really good. If if you can enjoy swimming, you can do it all your life. Exactly. So it's, a great, it's a great sport that way. All right, so Zach, we've got time for one last question and a, a parting comment from you, which I'll ask you for as well. So I know that you're um, a spokesperson for Louisville Water, and they are a really, really great utility. So tell me what it was that attracted you to be a spokesperson for them, and especially their Pure Tap brand. Well, they got the best tap water in the country, from what I've been told. And from when I taste it, I completely agree and understand. Um, so it's... It tastes good. You can drink it from the tap, so that's super convenient. I drink all my water from the tap. I like my water ice cold, so I give my ice cubes, freeze them. They're from the tap. Um, and then I thought it was cool. It's like you got a swimmer trying to compete uh, and finish his dream of becoming an Olympian with the local water company. Those just go together. Like I swim in the water, shower, cook, uh, eat, drink. So it, it's, it's a part of my everyday life, and to be able to, to do that with them, it's what makes it extra cool. That is cool. And what's your T-shirt say, by the way? We can barely see it. Oh, sorry. You got to drink like a local. Drink the Pure Tap. I love it. I love it. And then, um, you know, and everywhere you go in the U.S., Canada, probably those pools that you're in are filled by members of the American Waterworks Association. So that's pretty cool, too. Yeah. So I, wherever I go in the country. And I've traveled the country quite a – not quite every state, but I've traveled a few and. Um, yeah, so I'm always with you guys. Perfect. Uh, all right, so what's next for you, Zach? Where Are we going to see you in Paris? Yeah, I'm going to swim through at least 2024. Then I'll rethink my life, and maybe I'll keep swimming. Maybe I'll do get an engineering job. Uh, that's what I went to school for. Uh, but next week, on the 26th and 27th of August, I'm racing in Italy for the ISL for the DC Trident. Uh, I think that's on CBS, so you can catch me swimming there. And uh, I'll be there for about a month and then come back home and I'll be home for about another month and a half before I go back to the Netherlands to do the semifinals for the ISL. Well, Zach, I want to thank you for spending some time with me this morning and with everyone who's viewing Good Day AWWA. 
Really appreciate your sharing your experience at the U.S. Olympics and also helping with uh, to promote tap water and Louisville's tap water in particular. And for our audience, I hope you are like Zach, that you always reach for tap water. And I know you do if you're watching this, because as Zach says, it's convenient and it tastes better than that bottled water. It's true. And until we meet again, good day. AWWA. Have a good one. Is it true that Olympic quality swimmers never pee in the pool? No, it's not true. <laughs> we got that one down. And, I didn't think and, I was going to get asked that, but I was like, yeah. And the worst part is like when you're swimming, you always have to pee 10 seconds before your interval and that you, the time you have to go. You can have two minutes on the wall, not have to go 10 seconds. That's when you got to go. And that's why you taste the water, right? Well, I taste it at the bottom. <laughs> you don't taste it next to anybody. Uh, is there any swimmer that's known for that, that we, we know? I mean, is there any Olympic swimmer who's known for peeing in the pool more often than others? No. Some people will say that they don't, but they're probably lying. Supposedly the Europeans don't. I don't know if I believe well, that. I guess well, that's because they're that's because European. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> I remember Although, the first time I peed in the pool. I was wearing a tech suit and it was right before the race. My buddy's like, dude, just go in the water. Everyone does, and I was like, changed my life. 